When you forget everything else that I'm going to tell you, remember these three things. The way we're currently making our built environment is completely unsustainable. The good news is we can fix that. And at the end of this, I will have told you how we're doing that. So imagine you want to build a house. You start by building a foundation. Then you might need some walls, some supporting pillars. Maybe you want to build a garage as well. Quite many of these things you will be building out of concrete. In fact, concrete is the most produced material on Earth. We're producing more than 30 billion tons of concrete every single year. And we're not slowing down. In fact, every month from now on until 2050, with the current urbanization trend, we need to build a new Manhattan's worth of stuff out of concrete. And three quarters of the infrastructure that we need by 2050 has yet to be built. So what's the big deal? Concrete is made up of three parts. Concrete contains sand, some water, and cement. Cement makes up 10 to 20% by weight of concrete, but it's responsible for up to 85% of the CO2 emissions of concrete. And in fact, every ton of cement that we make in the traditional method produces between half a ton and one ton of CO2 emissions. So since the world produces 4 billion tons of cement every single year, that amounts to up to 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And at the root of the problem is a manufacturing process that is more than 100 years old and frankly, a little bit outdated. Because what you see when you go to a cement factory is you have two tons of rock coming in, ground limestone. But that limestone doesn't do anything by itself. You have to process it to make it useful as cement. So what do you do? You put it in a high temperature oven, which is fueled by fossil fuels, quite typically. It burns at 1400 degrees Celsius. And in fact, you're heating up the rock to such a high temperature that half of it evaporates into the air as CO2. And at the end of the day, you're left with one ton of usable cement versus two tons of rock that you were bringing in. So clearly, production processes like the one currently used for cement and many other materials are wasteful. We don't take full use of the materials that we are dealing with. And we're burning a huge amount of energy while doing so. So what the world needs to keep the planet livable is materials that are future-proof. At Pebble, we make future-proof materials for the built environment. And we do that with a fraction of the energy need and by permanently storing CO2 in the process. How do we do that? We do that by utilizing one of nature's best inventions, where CO2 naturally turns into stone. Technically, CO2 turns into CO3, which is a solid carbonate mineral, and in fact, more than 1 billion tons of CO2 every single year already turns into stone around the world. But the process is very slow. It's a geological process. But what if we could take it and accelerate it with technology? How about we accelerate it by a factor of, say, a million? Well, that's precisely what we do. We take CO2 that has been captured from industrial emissions or from the air or from the ocean we put it in a high-pressure reactor together with some water and another type of rock and the CO2 naturally what turns into a mineral product. But it does so very quickly under high pressure. By the way, when the CO2 turns into rock, it doesn't need energy. It generates energy. It generates heat. We don't need high temperature ovens for this process. The way we are designing our technology is to be compatible with any source of CO2 and the materials that we are producing, in addition to being usable as construction materials, can be used in a whole range of other industries, ranging from paper to rubber to plastics to toothpaste to cosmetics and chemicals. In fact, most likely since the time you woke up this morning, you have touched something that contains the, these types of mineral products at least 15 times today. So what if Instead of making our essential mineral products in the world, 
in this way, where we only take use of half of the material we have available and lose a lot of CO2 in the process, we bring in the same amount of material, but we add some CO2, storing it in the product to be left with three tons of product for each two tons of raw material that we were using instead of one ton. Well, it sounds almost too good to be true, right? Is this some sort of a trick? Are there a lot of emissions hiding somewhere else in the value chain, for instance, in grinding or shipping of the minerals or pressurizing the gas? Yes, there are some emissions, but they are tiny compared to the amount of CO2 that we can store this way. Well, what about global applicability? Is this a niche solution from a small, for a small part of the world? No. We're working with minerals that are the second most abundant one on the Earth's upper crust, and you find them on every single continent. Well, what about the cost and complexity of the equipment? High pressure sounds pretty expensive. Well, not so much. We can utilize a lot of the equipment already developed for the oil and gas and the mineral processing industries. And in fact, 50% of our team comes from these industries. But what about just simply the cost of the material? Will it be simply more expensive than the massive scale commodity materials currently on the market? No. We will be cost competitive from the first commercial plant onwards. How can we do that? For us, at the core of why this is possible is the fact that carbon for us is not a cost. Carbon is a revenue because we turn CO2 into a permanent, permanently storing form, we can charge for carbon sequestration, and this revenue can subsidize the production cost of the mineral products that we're bringing to the market. So we have to scale this up. But it's about building an entire new process industry. We can't just simply do it overnight. We have to do it responsibly and safely. But at the same time, we want to move as fast as possible. So what do you do? You do things in parallel. In fact, within 24 months since founding the company, we have moved from zero to first one and a half kilos and then 150 kilos of daily production capacity. We have decreased our cost of production by 50 fold. We have increased the conversion efficiency from 40% to 90% and not least sold high quality carbon sequestration with a direct air capture partner to the most selective partner on the market. In fact, over here is a video of the first production run of our large unit last week between Thursday and Friday night because the video shows more than a million words. Okay, well then, let's look at how well our material is actually performing in concrete, like this block over here. With this very early version of the material that we are currently producing, we've been able to substitute more than 50% of Portland cement in concrete. The team that we have has done this before. We scaled up multiple companies within software and hardware. We have deployed technologies from lab scale to full industrial field scale deployments, and we have written some of the most influential papers on CO2 mineralization. So what are we working on now? First, we're working with a selected group of early customers and partners to bring our product to market and pass it through the necessary certifications. At the same time, we're working on moving from a batch process to a continuous process to be ready to start commercially deploying this technology around the world. So let's build to last. Imagine if the built environment that you see around you could be literally a carbon sink instead of a huge CO2 emitter. And if making materials could be a solution to reversing the climate crisis instead of only making it worse. We think solving this problem is perhaps the greatest economic opportunity of many generations, and we would welcome you to join us on that journey. Thank you.